Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this amazing fur ball in Blender. Um, we're going to be using cycles and let's go ahead and hop right into it. And to show you the result real quick, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. This is what we will be aiming for here. As you guys can see, the render came out very nice. It's a very large render. Um, there's a lot of detail retained in the edges. There's some really nice lighting set up here. And I just wanted to show you guys how to achieve this lighting, how to achieve the actual hair particle system. Um, it's pretty simple, so let's go ahead and hop right into it. Very first thing I'm gonna do is open up a new Blender file, of course. Go ahead, go ahead and save this old one. Okay guys, we are in our new file here. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete our cube and I'm gonna add in a round cube. Now if you don't have that, you can go ahead and add the add-on for that, which is extra geometry. I'm gonna give this, let's see. I'm gonna give this 14 arcs and a radius of one. I'm gonna go ahead and right click, shade that smooth. I'm also gonna to go to my top down view, place my camera over here, and I'm gonna rotate it towards our cube. I'm gonna go ahead and pop our little tab out up here to center everything. I'm gonna give this a 90 degree X rotation and a zero degrees Z rotation. I'm gonna to snap to my camera, bring it down so we're facing our object. I'm gonna go ahead and make our dimensions 1920 by 1920. I'm gonna zoom out here. I'm gonna go ahead and save this as fur tutorial. Okay, tutorial, cool. Save that, and now let's go ahead and mess around with this. So we're gonna go ahead and add a hair particle system to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on our round cube. I'm gonna add a new hair particle system. Now, instead of emitter, you're gonna to wanna to click on hair, and already you're gonna see we have some hair here. So let's go ahead and adjust some of these settings. First of all, I'm gonna do 5,000 for the number here. So let's go ahead and increase that. Hair length, we're gonna go ahead and go with 0.7. And then for our segments, I'm gonna go ahead and choose two. As you can see, we already have some hair surrounding our sphere here, which is fantastic. Now under the source, uh, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that's emitting from faces. Then we're, we're good up there. For render, we're gonna go ahead and give that a steps of three. And then for children, we're gonna click on interpolated. Okay guys, that's really important. Now we're gonna give uh, both values here, display amount and render amount, 75. And as you can see, when we do that, we have a ton of particles to work with here. So there is a lot of little hair fibers here. So don't get overwhelmed. If you guys need to, you can um, turn down the display amount to like something like 50. That's totally up to you. Hair shape, we have our diameter root and our diameter tip. So basically, if it was like a cone, let me just show you guys what this means real quick. If you had a cone, the bottom of the cone, think about this as the hair strand. The bottom part is the root of the hair and the top is the tip. So this is, if this was a hair particle, the bottom would be like one and the tip would be like zero. So what we wanna do is we wanna set our um, strand diameter root, we're gonna set that to 0.7 and then I'm gonna set the tip to 0.2 and we should be good to go there. You're not gonna notice much of a difference until we start to add other things to this. Everything else should be set up here. Let's go ahead and add the last final step here, which is gonna be our force field. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a vortex force field here. Sorry, turbulence force field. And as you can see, just like that, we already have some crazy things going on with our hair. Now I'm gonna go ahead to my force field settings and give that a strength of three, maybe two. And this is where you can kind of play around with this and decide how you want everything to look. I think that looks pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and start adding some materials. Right away, we already have kind of what we're looking for. Now the magic comes in with the materials. Let's go to rendered view, switch over to cycles, GPU. I'm gonna go ahead and add an HDRI onto our scene here, which is available on polyhaven.com for free. I like this one, so I'm gonna go with this one. I'm gonna snap back to my camera. Now I'm gonna go back to solid view real quick. I'm actually gonna add in a plane, scaled up quite a bit. RX90 to rotate it on the X axis, GY to bring it back, and then I'm just gonna scale it up quite a bit. That looks pretty good. And now what we wanna do is let's add an actual material to our sphere here. So I'm gonna add two material slots, okay guys? And for the first one, I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a principal BSDF. I'm gonna make it blue or maybe purple, like a darker purple color, that looks good. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the top material slot add a new material here, head over to the shading tab, and then we're going to delete this, rename this to hair. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a hair BSDF, plug that in as follows. 
And let's go ahead and snap back to the camera. Now, what we're gonna have to do is go to our particle settings and under render, it's gonna, it's gonna ask you what material you want. Make sure you select hair. And let's go to rendered view and let's go ahead and see what this looks like. And then instead of reflection, I'm gonna choose transmission. And then I'm just gonna lower my roughness values a little bit here and I'm gonna make this maybe like a, kind of like a purple color like that. I think that looks pretty good. The very next step is to click on your background plane and make that a nice dark color there. That looks pretty good, awesome. And now let's go ahead and add some lighting to our scene to really make this thing pop. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a point light. Add yourself a point light here. Bring it back on the Y axis. And then we're gonna bump that value up to 2000 and the radius to one. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this down on the Z axis here. And you're gonna see as we bring this down, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my radius to two. We have this really nice lighting effect on the bottom of our um, hair particle system here. If you zoom in, you can really, really see it. And my computer is going quite slow because I'm recording with OBS, but look at how beautiful that looks. It just looks gorgeous. And you can adjust the turbulence as needed as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this point light, bring it up on the Z axis. And I'm just gonna change this to more of like a warmer tone or a cooler tone. And I'm gonna go back to the bottom one and make it a little bit more of a cooler tone. And then what I'm gonna do, as you guys can see, I have three uh, two point lighting system here. I'm gonna actually go to my side view, duplicate the light one more time, put it up here, and I'm gonna give this a solid white tone, no saturation, with a radius of three. And let's just go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. The goal is to have this um, kind of flood the front with light, and then we're gonna have our two back, backlit displays there. I'm gonna go ahead and make our background quite metallic as well. And then I'm gonna choose my top point light, drag it up quite a bit, and my bottom point light here, drag it down a little bit. Now this is where you can really play around with the lighting. I prefer like a nice soft look, and I think this already looks really good. And then of course you can take your background plane, you can move it forward, backward. Sometimes moving it backwards helps a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead to our camera here, viewport display, and then we're gonna bump up the pass part out so we can really zoom in on what's going on here. And as you guys can see, this looks fantastic already. I'm very, very pleased with how this came out. That is pretty much the tutorial, guys. That's how you achieve that awesome lighting with this fur effect. And then of course, you can go in here and you can adjust all sorts of settings. If you want to, you can make the, heart, the hair particles longer in length. This would be a value of one. And then it's better to do this in solid view so you can really visualize what's happening. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in more on our subject too. I'm gonna give myself a, let's see, maybe a 65 millimeter lens. And as you guys can see, we are pretty much good to go and ready to render. And that is pretty much the tutorial right there. I'll go over some quick render settings with you guys. Again, depending on the amount of interpolated children you have for your hair particles, you'll get a slightly different result. Right now we have 75. If we tried something like 20, you would get a little bit of a different result. And if you like that amount, make sure you change the render amount as well. I actually think that looks pretty nice, so I think we might go with something like that. One other thing I really like to do that I've been doing lately is I turn off all of my overlays. Because to be honest, it just helps me visualize everything a little bit more. And it's just so clean. Um, and to turn those back on, you just click this little drop down up here. Now for render settings, max samples, I'm gonna go ahead and do, you guys, this is where it's gonna really surprise you. I'm gonna do 50 samples. Denoising, we'll choose optics. Now here's where the real magic comes in. Go over to your format settings, your render settings here, and do 200% for your size of your image. Go ahead and click on solid view, hit F12 to render, and watch how quickly this renders now. So we're rendering this at a higher um, quality image, so a larger size, but with a lower sample count. And it's telling me we're gonna take less than a minute 30 here. That's pretty darn good if you ask me. And this is a technique that I like to use a lot. I don't really hear people talking about it much, but I use it all the time. It's kind of like a little trickery here. Um, you're kind of tricking Blender into doing less samples at a larger image size. So at just the right balance, it seems to actually decrease your render time with no sacrifice to quality. I mean, look how good this looks. And the denoising hasn't even kicked in yet. Also, I'm very zoomed in here. The actual size of the image is probably about this big. And it looks darn good, even without denoising. So I'm pretty pleased with the result. 
Um, again, I think the key here is the lighting setup. I think it's really crucial to have a lighting setup like this in order to get a good render. And also, you just really need to play with your settings of your material. You need to play with your settings of your positioning of your objects and the particle settings. But like, look at the top here and look how good that looks. It looks like you can just reach into the screen and just touch this fur and you could really feel how this fur would look. It just looks so good. And the denoising hasn't even kicked in yet. I don't even know if you need denoising on this. All right, denoising is kicking in. And there is our completed render. Oh my goodness, I could make these all day. I, I just think it looks so brilliant. It looks so good. And, and you can play with the lighting. Now, right now we have a warm light on the bottom and a cooler light up top. So we have this really nice contrast. And since we used a, print, a um, hair BSDF, we can see the transmission between the hair particles here. So you can really tell this overlapping light silhouette effect that you're getting between each strand and how the light passes through. It just looks so natural, so good. Um, and you can't even really see the round cube inside, so you don't really have to worry about that second material. But this just looks fantastic. I am very pleased with this result, and I'm hoping that um, you guys can try this out for yourself and see what, what you can come up with. But this looks fantastic, and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I will talk to you guys in the next tutorial.